Next question is from Barb. And my question computer is over here today. So one moment, let's look at this. Okay, a uh, question that's been going around on social media. Why hasn't this disease decimated the homeless population? Interesting question. I don't think there are many homeless people getting tested. And so I think the amount of disease out there is probably unknown. And I also think that homeless people die from various reasons all the time. And I don't know that there is anyone who necessarily keeps track of this other than possibly the coroner in, you know, one little column at the end of an Excel spreadsheet or something. For the most part, I think the homeless are invisible, but I don't think they're immune to coronavirus. I think um, most likely they're going to be highly exposed. And probably as we, you know, it, once we figure out how to knock out the larger part of coronavirus, there is going to be these residual little pockets of the virus. One of those, I think, is going to be uh, undocumented people, um, homeless people, anybody who is basically, who doesn't have a, like, like a fixed address or for various reasons can't be seen to be coming into contact with anything related to the government. And I think for people like this, the virus is still going to be there, but testing is going to be that much more difficult. So I actually had a look at um, if you had to get a test in Tex um, Texas, College Station, where I am right now, um, in this lovely hotel room. And I even made my bed in the back, so, <laughs> so it wouldn't look too embarrassing. Um, there are only two places in all of Brazos County, which is Bryan and College Station and a whole big square around that. And uh, both of those places are, uh, I think one's in Bryan, one's in College Station. I even had a look, see where they are. One of them is located on a pretty busy street that has no sidewalks and is very far from anywhere that people live. And so I would think if you were homeless, you would have a real hard time knowing to go there and going there. Um, the other one is somewhere up uh, in Bryan, and you, you might have a better shot of going in there. But of course, if you were to go into one of these places, the first thing they'd ask is, oh, so where's your insurance? And um, you got to fill out your address on all these forms, uh, presumably. And so I think there are a lot of barriers that would either scare off or make it very difficult for somebody like that to get tested. And so, yeah, I would imagine there is a COVID-19 problem among the homeless. And I would imagine we have no idea how big it is. And I can only imagine these things because I haven't seen any data on them. But that is a good question. That's the kind of thinking that's going to help us get through this and out to the other side. We've got to imagine, all right, where are the pockets? Where are the places that the virus could be that the test wouldn't have reached or where people would not have come forward for testing? Those are going to be the last little pockets. And once we get rid of those, after we get rid of the uh, gigantic, yeah, gigantic, they're not really pockets, it's just everywhere, um, then that's part of the path to uh, getting things back to normal. So... Good question. Very thoughtful. Uh, made me think. Yeah. And uh, worth looking into. Uh, it's really going to be something uh, when they finally do get those numbers and see what's been happening. But I guess this virus is only um, something like 1% fatal. And so there, there are a lot of homeless people. And losing 1% of them, I don't know that anybody would necessarily notice. I mean, there'd be a couple people that would notice. They'd have contacts, they might have friends, but yeah, uh, everyday life, they're probably invisible to most everybody. So there we go. Thanks very much. This is Ask Dr. Ben.